Hello, Marcel here to show you what's new in the latest build of Lucid Physics plugin for 3ds Max. We have added support for a few things and probably the most notable one this week is the ability to use forces with all of the Lucid simulation. To demonstrate this, let me quickly create a cloth object and an inflatable object. My cloth object is just going to be a plane and my inflatable object is going to be a torus this time to spice things up a little bit. So I'm going to create these two objects and then I'm going to add mesh select to the first one and to the second one. And now I'm going to select the vertices on both the torus and my plane which are going to hold it in place. I'm going to use a cloth preset on my plane which is going to add lucid modifier as before and I'm going to add an inflatable preset to my torus which is going to make it an object that contains some air inside of it. So these objects are going to be fixed in place right now and if I just press play I'm going to see them kind of just fall down under gravity on their own merit. And next step I'm going to do is to add a force into the scene. I'm going to add just simple wind for demonstration purposes but you can use any space warp inside of 3ds Max or any other force plugin that you can find. And it is very easy to add forces to lucid objects. Basically all you have to do is bind the space warp to the object. So I'm going to bind this one to the torus and I'm also going to bind it to my plane. It is that easy and if I go into modifier stack you can see that there is now a binding for both of these objects and of this space warp. So if I press play now and start simulating there is some kind of effect it's not too big and my uh, cloth is going a little bit crazy. I have gone and quickly increased the detail in my cloth a little bit just to make it more interesting for the simulation purposes. So now we can see that the wind is affecting both my flag and my little torus here and I can select my wind and just change its parameters in real time so I can increase the strength and it's going to make uh, everything more windy and I can also introduce some turbulence which will produce more realistic wind effects for us. Next up is a new feature which allows recording particle flow particles that are simulated using Lucid just like any other Lucid simulation. To start let me go ahead and create a particle flow source and I'm just going to create one that's aiming to the side like this. And just like before in the other video I'm going to go into my particle view and I will add the Lucid operator to it. And I'm going to add another Lucid object which is not particles but maybe some cloth that we will have particles fall onto. I'm going to start Lucid and play back my simulation. And already we have a very interesting result of particles sort of filling in this mesh. So now to demonstrate the new feature I'm going to discontinue the simulation and press the record button which is going to record and play back the simulation at the same time. Once it has stopped recording I can now scrub the recorded data as I would any other animation and it performs very smoothly and quickly and allows you to save all this information with your scene. One other thing that we have added is the ability to also have forces influence the particle flow particles. So I'm just going to demonstrate this by also adding a wind force and this time instead of doing it directly inside the scene I'm going to open my particle view and I'm going to add a force operator and in this force operator I'm just going to select my uh, wind space warp that I have just created and now if I start simulating again we will get this wind affecting our particles. There are some issues in transferring the velocity vectors between particle flow and lucid but we are working on fixing this for the next build. One other new feature in this build are the new tether parameters for cloth that you can use and it's just fun to play around to, to get the right look that you want from your cloth by uh, modifying some of these parameters and seeing what kind of effect they will have on your mesh. So something for you guys to play around with in this new build. Thank you very much.